Earl Sharon, the butcher of Beirut, the old war, the history books in behalf of peace for Israel. Now that would surprise everyone, including Earl Sharon, I suppose. But think back on earlier American history. Imagine Richard Nixon going to China, communist China, working out a deal for normalization with China, with his record as an anti-communist all of his political career. If he had been defeated for president and if there had been Hubert Humphrey, the Democrat, going to China to normalize relations, a lot of pundits have said, well, Nixon would have been in Indianapolis the next day denouncing Hubert for doing it. But Nixon, because of his anti-communist past, was able to pull it off. Maybe Sharon will see that because of his, his past as a belligerent against Arabs, against Palestinians, will be able to pull off a deal like this to the advantage of the Israeli people to bring to an end the anxiety that these human beings on the Israeli side must feel every day of every year. Uh, things are getting worse for the Israeli people as well as for the Palestinians. And maybe he'll decide, well, here's a chance to bring it to an end. If it doesn't happen? If it doesn't happen, I think that... The Arabs then have the right to, to find other means of getting the rights back? Well, the cycle of violence may rise. It probably will. I don't think the Palestinians are going to quit the assaults on on Israeli citizens. I think that will probably intensify of anything. I'm sure that uh, many Israelis will find a way to believe and have a happier life in another country. It may well be that there will be a civil war within Israel between those who want to, the accommodation with the Palestinians and those that demand uh, that the settlements keep growing. So a lot of terrible things are possible. And in that scene, I don't see much bright hope for anything but violence. And I think the, the Israelis ought to recognize that because of demography, time is not on Israel's side. The day will come when the Palestinians will be so much more numerous than the, than the Israelis, and they will have the access to support from Arab states, I would assume, uh, they may come when Israel will be under a a terrible invasion and perhaps its own destruction. Quick question, Mr. Finley, about what's happening in Afghanistan. There's an anaconda operation at the moment taking place in Gardez with U.S. forces for, um, and Afghans fighting um, Taliban and Al-Qaeda. We don't know who's, who are they fighting at the moment there. But when the operation started in Afghanistan five months ago, it was against the same people the United States supported back during the Russian Not invasion true. of Afghanistan. Not true. At that time, the Mujahideen was referred to as heroes. Now they're referred to the, t the Taliban and the others as, as the enemies, the terrorists. And does it, don't you feel that this helps to fuel the bad image uh, which Americans yes. have of Islam? Absolutely. I'm troubled about the whole thing. I understand the desire of President Bush to seek out the persons responsible for 9-11. Uh, he, I assume, is convinced that uh, the Al-Qaeda were a part of it if not the masterminds. But does that justify bombardment throughout the entirety of the, these, uh, this unfortunate country that has no defensive armor worthy of the name, that has had nothing but misery for about 30 years? Uh, I wrote a chapter about the Taliban in my book, Silent No More. I wrote it long before 9-11, uh, and I tried to understand the Taliban, what they accomplished, what went wrong. There was a time when they were the conquering heroes. They didn't have, a, have to fire a shot to take over much of, of Afghanistan. Afghanistan. It was so distressed with the activities of the warlords and the experience of 10 years of Soviet occupation. They welcomed the Taliban because they would bring uh, stability, they would end the violence, they'd end the rape the, the abuse of women, and they would uh, disarm the population so that uh, there would no longer be free fire all over the country. And yet, then they, they embarked upon this ridiculous um, uh, measure that they call Islamic tradition 
of abusing women. Unfortunately, they went bad, but nevertheless, they, they have had a mixed fix. But let me cut you That's there, Mr. Finley. They said uh, that that situation arose because the West did not deliver the promised aid to, uh, to Afghanistan. One of the Taliban ministers said, how can we have schools for, to educate women when we don't have our money to feed? No, I, don't, don't, I don't blame the Taliban entirely for the abuse of women, although I think they did inten intensify it. Women had been neglected for a long time in uh, the history of Afghanistan. The literacy rate among women when the Taliban took power was only about 5%. But even among men, it was only about 50%. They had a long way to go to achieve a decent life there. And they naturally welcomed the support of Osama bin Laden. He became one of their military heroes. And the reason why the Taliban did not release him to the United States for prosecution was that they were grateful to Osama bin Laden for helping the, the other uh, defenders of Afghanistan to rid the country of the Soviets. He was sort of their Lafayette. The Marcus de Lafayette in early American history, a Frenchman came to the American colonies, helped them defeat Britain. Thank Osama you. Saudi went to Afghanistan to help defeat the Soviet occupiers. So the, the attitude of the, of the Afghan people I don't think has been thoroughly understood by the leadership of our country before they embarked upon this uh, very extensive war against the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda. Mr. Findlay, we thank you for being with us on Highlights. We had a very interesting talk, and we do hope that the people who listened to us have actually understood more about the pro-Israeli lobby in the U.S. and, of course, about the false images of Islam and how these images actually should be changed if the world is going to live in a better and peaceful uh, situation. Thank you, Mr. Finley. Thank you. Dear viewers, that was uh, former U.S. Congressman Paul Finley, and we were speaking today about the pro-Israeli lobby and, of course, about the false images Americans have of Islam. Of course, this was a special edition of Highlights, and we thank you for being with us. Thank you.